A few weeks ago, Entropic released their Claude 3.7 and 3.7 thinking models. These are the state of the art models. They perform significantly better in coding tasks. And I decided to take those few weeks to mess around with them and see how they perform inside of Cursor and inside of Windsor for real world coding tasks. So I'm making this video today to share with you my opinion on these models, as well as give you some tips and tricks on how to best utilize these and some settings that you can enable inside of editors like Cursor to really get the best performance. Now, I know a lot of you have probably watched many videos on this. So you kind of understand what this is about already, but the main takeaway is that we have two models or two types of models. We have the standard model, Claude 3.7, and then we have the extended reasoning model, which can really go into deep thought and can be self-correcting and kind of plan out what it needs to do next. Now, in terms of coding, this is a pretty big deal. It can take longer to run, but typically I find that you do get significantly better performance, especially on larger tasks where there's a lot of different components and it should really think through a plan rather than just trying to immediately generate all of the various tokens. Now, as you go through here, there's a ton of information that you can read. I think the important stuff is to look at things like the benchmarks, for example. So here you can see that it's performing about 13% better than the previous Claude.3 model, which was already kind of the state of the art when it came to coding. And then same thing here for agentic tool use, which is actually, I think, a bigger deal. Now we're seeing AI agents popping up everywhere. We have things like MCP servers, which I'm going to be talking about soon in a new video. And the agents are really coming to the forefront quite quickly. So having models that can properly utilize these tools really is kind of the new benchmark and what a lot of these companies need to aim for. And you can see here kind of how that works on the retail tools, the airline tools, etc. And we still have a good way to go, at least in some of the benchmarks here in terms of the tool usage. Anyways, that's the general information. Overall, I will tell you this is very impressive. And if you're not yet using it for coding, I recommend that you check it out. So what I'm going to do now is hop over to the computer, show you a few demos, and I'm going to explain to you some settings and kind of tips and tricks from someone who is a professional software engineer in terms of how you can use these models. However, first, a quick word from our sponsor. Now, if you are going to be using AI models like this for coding, especially in a professional environment, then they definitely are going to be making mistakes. And that's where today's sponsor, CodeRabbit, can come in. This is an AI code reviewer that's revolutionizing the way that teams merge code changes faster and with superior quality. Now imagine an assistant that not only spots issues in your code, but also suggests fixes and explains the reasoning behind each recommendation. Well, that's exactly what CodeRabbit does. CodeRabbit provides automatic PR summaries, detailed file change walkthroughs, and runs popular linters like Biome, Rough, and PHP Stand to ensure your code is secure and efficient. With CodeRabbit, you can elevate your code quality through AI-powered, context-aware reviews, and even apply custom code review instructions with ease. It's already making waves having reviewed over 10 million pull requests, being installed in millions of repos, and engaging with over 20,000 developers every single day across thousands of organizations. And the best part of this is that it's free for open source projects. So if you're ready to experience faster merges and cleaner code, then click the link in the description and grab a one month free trial using my coupon code. Thanks to CodeRabbit for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into it. All right, guys, so I'm inside of Cursor here and I wanna show you how to enable this model and also some of the best practices. Now to do that, you're just gonna open up the chat window or the composer window in the new version of Cursor. It's kind of all in one. And if you wanna do that, you can use Control I or Command I. That's gonna give you the relatively new agent mode. And then if you wanted the ask mode, you can do Control L, but I recommend put it in agent mode because this is gonna allow it to actually create new files for you, modify files, run commands, and just do everything on its own without you having to manually apply all of the changes to files. Now from here, you're also gonna to wanna to select the model. Of course, I'm going with Claude 3.7 thinking, which is the one that I'm suggesting, but they also have Claude 3.7. If you just want a simple change that doesn't require a lot of thought process or reasoning, then you can go with Claude 3.7 and it will be faster. But in my case, I almost always use the thinking model because I wanted to go through that reasoning step. Now what most people are probably gonna do here is they're gonna grab some kind of prompt, so something like this, you know, create a modern and visually striking landing page, and then they're just gonna throw it in here and type enter. I'm also just gonna tell this, use JS, CSS, and normal HTML, because that's what I want it to use for this, and I want it to go crazy with React or something. Okay, so they're gonna go ahead and hit enter, and this is fine. You're gonna see that it starts by thinking, it's kind of building a bit of a plan, which is exactly what we want it to do, and then it's gonna start modifying the various different files. 
Now that's good, but again, there's way better ways to use this that I'm gonna show you in one second, but let's just see kind of the output that we get and what this walks us through. So first notice that it's requiring us to actually press to run this command. We can actually change this where we can use something called YOLO mode where it will just automatically run commands for us. That can be potentially dangerous, so I'm gonna show you a safe way to do that later on. But for now, we're just gonna go and press accept. Now, because I'm using PowerShell, uh, this command didn't work, so it's gonna tell me, okay, let's use the PowerShell command. You can see it made our various directories for us here, and now it's gonna start spinning up the HTML file. This probably is gonna take a few minutes, so I will cut when it's finished. All right, so that just finished, and that wrote 1,800 lines of code for us. It did take a while, probably about seven minutes. Uh, anyways, let's pop open the finished product, which is this. And I gotta say, this is pretty impressive for a landing page generated from a single prompt from a single agent. Um, that's kind of insane. Let me just refresh so we get all of the animations. You can see this stuff's kind of popping up. Um, and a lot of the stuff I didn't even ask it to do, it just kind of came up with it during its planning. You can see there's a few mistakes here, right? Like this line is over top of the leadership thing. Uh, the testimonials isn't quite working. Maybe that's just because we don't have any other ones added here. Get in touch is good. This is kind of cool, this spinning animation. The buttons are functioning. Anyways, cool, right? We get an interesting landing page. Now that's pretty damn impressive already. I wasn't able to get something this good with the other models. So Claude 3.7 and the thinking one specifically definitely is outperforming, but I'm gonna delete all of this and show you another way that we can get kind of a better result that's a little bit more predictable. Because in this case, we just trusted the model to come up with the plan, write all of the code and just do everything. But we didn't first review the plan, which in my opinion is a pretty critical step. Okay, so what I just did here is I put all of that code in a V1 folder and then I made a V2 folder and I've gone here and I've just adjusted the exact same prompt. So at the end, I said before writing any code, come up with a detailed plan that can be placed in a readme file. Use the V2 folder for writing the readme file. Again, do not write any code, just help me plan. So let's see what plan this comes up with now. And this is gonna save us a lot of time in the future because we're able to review what this is about to do and adjust the plan before we just get it to go out and write 1800 lines of code. Okay, cool. So it looks like it generated this readme file for me. We can kind of make this a little bit smaller and start reviewing it. I'm just gonna accept it so I can read through this and I'll actually just open the markdown preview so we can kind of see the plan that it came up with and if this is what we actually wanna continue with. Okay, there's a lot of stuff in this plan. I'm not gonna read through all of it, but I am just gonna say, can we focus more on heavy animations and a wow factor on the main page and let's see how it adjusts the plan here and then we'll go ahead and actually generate the code. So it adjusted the plan for us now. So what I'm gonna do is get it to code this out. So I'm gonna say, great, can you now implement this plan and write all of the code? And then I'm gonna say, refer to the at, and then I'm gonna specify the file. So I'm gonna say readme v2 and place all code in the slash v2 folder. So let's see what we get now and we can compare the two landing pages and see which one is better. All right, so it has definitely been a few minutes. This just generated 5,000 lines of code, which is kind of incredible. And I just popped open the example here and this is what it looks like. Let me refresh. You can see that we get kind of some nice animations. It's even giving us this like scroll wheel down thing. And immediately I can see that there's this kind of like bubble that's following my cursor, which is kind of interesting because I asked for like some more advanced animations. We have some other animations popping up here. If I go here, you can see that these kind of logos are like following my mouse as I move around the screen. I don't know if I like that or not, but anyways, it added that. If I hover over here, you can see that we get the text. Obviously there's, you know, some mistakes here. Like there's some things that we could fix. We have some testimonials, same thing. You know, we have to add the images properly and all of that kind of stuff. We have like a roadmap going on here. We have some more animations, uh, you know, pop-ups for all of this kind of stuff. Not perfect, but from a single prompt, that is pretty damn cool. So anyways, that's what it gave us. And that's why I suggest that you start with the plan and then just get it to implement the plan. And then at least that way you can always go back to the plan, you can adjust it and you can see what the model's actually about to be doing. Now it was having some issues where it was stalling or was failing to modify files. And that's because it was trying to write like 2000 lines of code in a single file. So something that I did, I have to would scroll all the way up here to probably find that, is I told it, hey, don't write more than 300 lines of code. So this right here, continue try to separate large files the smaller ones don't write more than 300 lines in a single file and even though i spelled that incorrectly when i did that then it went ahead and it was able to generate everything even though it did take a pretty long amount of time 
So that's kind of the basics here. But if you want to make this even better, what I suggest doing is going to the cursor settings. So let me just get out of this here and go to file and then preferences and cursor settings. If you open up the cursor settings here, there's a bunch of things that you can do to really make this agent even more powerful and utilize the Claude 3.7 model much better. So for example, if you go to features, you can scroll through here, there's a ton of different features. And what you may consider doing is enabling YOLO mode. Now YOLO is, I guess, you only live once mode. And obviously this is a dangerous feature to enable, hence why we got the warning. And what this allows the agent to do is automatically execute commands on your behalf. So before, if it wants to execute a command like installing an NPM package or setting up a Python virtual environment, you're gonna have to press allow and you kinda need to manually watch the process. But here, if you enable YOLO mode, then it can just go and do it for you. So you can give this a prompt. Uh, again, I haven't enabled this because I don't really trust this mode, but it is something I just wanted to mention to you guys. And you can tell it what it should or shouldn't be doing. You can actually give it specific commands and these will be the only commands that it's allowed to execute. So you can give it something you know, like Python dash M V E N V V N V to create a new virtual environment or you can give it a deny list. Now I'd recommend if you do enable this, then of course you want to disable commands like rm-r. You want to enable things like giving it root access or using the sudo command or anything that could be potentially dangerous. And in fact, you could probably just go to the model, say, give me a command deny list for YOLO mode and then paste a bunch of them in here. And also I would highly recommend that you enable this delete file protection so that it will not automatically delete any files for you because obviously that can be a pretty big issue and probably the Thing that you're going to be the most concerned with. Same things with file permissions. You want to make sure that you add a bunch of deny list commands here if you are going to be using this. Okay, so that's the YOLO mode. Again, I'm going to disable that because I really don't trust these models that much. And I'm going to go back to the cursor settings. So let's just open this up, cursor settings here. And I want to go to rules. Now you may have noticed that when my code was being generated, it kind of automatically tried to make it modular by adding these various folders. Like we had all these different JS files, these CSS files were inside of assets. Same thing in the V1, we had like styles, JS, images, etc. And it did that by default. And normally it won't do that. The reason why is because I have these user rules enabled in cursor. Now I highly recommend that you write a lot of user rules and that you generally tell the AI how you want it to write code. If you don't do this, it usually is just gonna spit everything into a single file, which is gonna be very difficult to debug. And you can see that I've kind of really, um, you know, driven that home here inside of this uh, rules. So ensure the generated code is well organized, use descriptive variable function and class names, include concise, meaningful inline comments when it's non-obvious law Project, adhere to established coding standards, write code that is maintainable, avoid overly complex or deeply nested structures. And you're just telling it again, all of the things that it should be doing every single time it's generating code. Now these are user rules that will apply to every single prompt. However, you can also add project rules. So what I recommend is once you create your project, make a new rules file. I'll just call this something like, you know, code rules. And then you can actually give a description on what this rule file is for, and you can have multiple different rules. So we can have, you know, coding rules, and then we could have like backend rules or front end rules, or we could have documentation rules. And we can really go super detailed here, especially if you're using this project with multiple people, and you can paste in really large markdown content telling the model and telling the project exactly what it should be doing. So I recommend once you create kind of the first version of your project, Put some rules in here specifically related to things like the technologies that you're using. If you wanted to install different frameworks, if you wanted to document something, if you wanted to use the newest version, like if you have any specifics, put them all in the rules so that you don't forget. And more importantly, the model doesn't forget. Because I find a lot of times what happens is the model later on when you've been using it, you know, hundreds of hours in a project, if it wants to like fix a problem, it'll just do that by replacing an entire framework. It's like, oh, it's not working in React, let's use, you know, Next.js instead, or let's use, you know, Vue instead. And it just goes and does these like crazy modifications, changing massive things that you very likely don't want to happen. Whereas if you have it in the rules, exactly the frameworks, technologies, languages that you want to be using, then it's always going to use that. And you'll avoid a lot of these repetitive prompts where you're telling it like, no, don't do that go back and do this. So really kind of add all of these rules files. Obviously it's hard for me to give you an example in just kind of this demo environment that I'm showing, but you can add a ton of markdown. And what I typically do is I will go to something like ChatGPT. Here's an example of something. And I say, you know, can you give me rules for my project using React and TypeScript? And then you can just literally copy this, copy all the markdown, 
can take it and paste it inside of here. And you can of course read through this and make sure that it adheres to the rules that you actually want. Okay, so that is rules. And the last thing that I wanna to mention to you is to make sure, especially if you're a beginner here, that you're using version control. Now, if you're unfamiliar with version control, what I'm talking about is Git, okay? I'm gonna put a video on screen that will teach you how to use this in case you wanna check it out. But we see these nightmare stories of people using these AI code editors and they get the AI to make a change and it like deletes a bunch of stuff or it breaks something in their code base and they can't get back to the previous version. Now that's exactly what version control is designed for. So before you even start using these AI models, just go inside of your command line, type something like git init. This is gonna initialize a new repo for you. And then anytime you make a major change and you like the change and it's functioning, go ahead and make a commit. The most basic way to do this is you type git add dot, you then type git commit dash M, which stands for message, give a description of what you just did. So we'll say, you know, create two landing pages. Okay, and then there you go. Everything that you've just done is saved. So now if you were to make a crazy change that breaks everything in your code base, you can actually revert back to that previous commit. You'll have to look up how to do that because this is not a Git tutorial, but you will be able to get back to the previous state. So please, 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 please learn and use version control, especially if you're a beginner, because this is gonna save you a absolute massive amount of headaches, especially if the project starts getting larger and you're doing a lot of big changes using these AI models. Okay guys, so that's pretty much it. That's what I wanted to share with you in this video. Claude 3.7 is ridiculous. The fact that we have models that can write 5,000 plus lines of code on a single prompt and generate entire landing pages that previously people would charge me 20K to make is just insane. This is really getting crazier day by day. I have no idea what this is gonna look like in three, six, 12 months time, but I'm excited to keep following along and kind of staying at the cutting edge of technology. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know what you thought in the comments down below, and I look forward to seeing you in another one.